hear you. So Bill Fabian, uh, Monroe Infrared. Well, thank you. Thank you, gentlemen, uh, ladies, if there are any. But um, so my name is Bill Fabian, uh, Vice President of Monroe Infrared Technology. In this past uh, December um, was my 33rd anniversary, 33 years in the infrared business. Um, quick overview of Monroe Infrared. We are, well, it's in our name. We're in the infrared business. We are a, a large dealer and distributor for all FLIR. I started uh, dealing with the home inspectors and um, I started doing sessions and talks with Fabby and then Ashy and the other one. Um, but uh, I would ask, uh, you know, how many home inspectors have uh, infrared cameras? And I would say probably around 5%, um, you know, it'd be a you know, hand count uh, in, a, in a group. And today I would venture to guess it's probably closer to 30 or 40 percent uh, it's taken off it's been it's become very quickly uh, something that uh, home inspectors can use to do a much more thorough inspection and at the same time uh, a lot of guys are because they're qualified and certified to use it and uh, um, they got a good infrared camera they get more money so it's another way and a lot of guys are making more money um, so anyway, I'm going to give you an overview. Um, I've been doing sessions for ASHI at, at Inspection World uh, for four or five years running, two hour sessions. And this is going to be a condensed version of that. Um, our company is based in Brunswick, Maine. I live in Shelby Township, Michigan, and we've got locations around the country. So uh, long as I can click. All right, come on, there we go. There we go. I already covered that. I already covered that. So about seven and a half years ago, I was approached and and started the certified residential thermographer training class designed specifically for home inspectors. So quickly, I've learned I think as much from home inspectors over the last seven and a half years. Um, I think in in what you guys do, as they have for me, and what an infrared camera can do for them. So. Um, I enjoy the two-day class immensely. Um, anyway, we're going to discuss some of the um, the shortcomings as well as the um, it's a condition-based survey. Uh, it's you know people have asked, what do I need training for? Uh, you know, it's a camera. How hard is it to take a picture? And um, you know, if it were about taking a picture, I could cover that probably in an hour training in the certified residential thermographers, two days. There's a lot of stuff behind it. You've got to understand the conditions needed, what things should look like and what they shouldn't look like and how to interpret it and how to report it, and how to speak intelligently about what the infrared camera is showing you. So uh, I'm going to ask a quick question. Can you see my pointer over that image? Yes. Okay. This image in the upper left-hand corner, the feed to a house. Um, very common uh, overhead lines, and we teach you how to interpret. How do I know that's a load issue or a connection issue, not a load issue? Uh, here's your two splices, and we can see it warmer at that connection than that connection. And the radiometrics tell us it's a 212 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference from what each of those connections. Uh, this is a, a bee's nest that once the wall was opened up, um, you know, for a good 40 degree delta T on a cool morning um, between a, a bee's nest and the wall cavity. So um, anyway, there's all kinds of stuff. Appliances, water temperature, energy issues. Um, you know, I, I realize the home inspectors are not generally there to be, to do a, uh, you know, energy inspection. But if you're walking through a house and you find uh, some tremendous areas of uh, areas that appear to be uninsulated, um, you, know, you can recommend that they get an energy audit done. But we have to learn what things should and should not look like. And an infrared camera does not see through the walls, contrary to public opinion. Uh, infrared cameras are not x-ray machines. They only sense surface temperature differences. And I, I get asked this all the time, well, if that's true, why can I see the two by fours? Well, 
you're not seeing the two by fours. You're seeing the temperature difference in the paint on the outside of this house. And that temperature difference is caused by heat transfer through the wall. And the two by four is insulating that wall cavity better than the cavity is. So we tell you, how, we teach you how to interpret that, um, the conditions needed. Appliances, condenser units, heat pumps, water is without a doubt the number one application for home inspectors using an infrared camera. Um, whether it's- hey, Bill? It, yes. How long is that CRT certification good for? It's a three-year certification. Uh, you can reset the class and you can also um, just sit the last day or if you go on and do level one. Infrared is a constant learning program. It's not like a pipe wrench or a screwdriver. We show you one time how to use it and, and you're good. It's something you need to develop over time and to stay with it. I mean, I still go to uh, uh, conferences as a student to learn. And, I, you know, I'll be the first to tell you, I don't know everything. I'm still learning as well. So, um, yeah, it's a three-year certification. Uh, the, all right, uh, water infiltration. This is a weird one. This was uh, solar reflecting off of one house windows onto the side, the north side of a building, and this was in Metro Detroit, and melted the vinyl siding on the side of the house. And here you can see the vinyl temperature, approximate temperature in the shade. All right, um, why, okay. Got a, got, can't roll the mouse. I already covered this too. 33 years, teach level, I teach level one, level two. I am a level three for ITC, which is as high as you can go. Uh, I live in Michigan. Well, all right. And you're good uh, looking. You, I'm sorry. And, and you're good, good looking. looking. Getting a little, uh, you know. Anyway, um, I'm going to, I'm going to reveal, uh, as long as nobody's recording this, um, they have come out with a C5. Uh, it's going to be officially released next week. Or the 12th, I think, something like that. High resolution, um, very nice price. So um, stay tuned. That's all I can say. Are you guys offering the CRT online? Yes, sir. Um, actually, tomorrow morning it's at 9 a.m. will be the third week in a row that I'm sold out. Um, it's not right now we're doing 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So um, the first class I did, I had a gentleman from Hawaii start at 3 a.m. his time. And uh, the same class, I had five people from New Brunswick, Canada, which is mid-Atlantic time. And I was like, I don't know what that is. And he said, it's an hour east of our eastern time zone. So we had seven time zones represented at the uh, at the first meeting, but I I was very skeptical, and I've talked to a lot of people, you know, that have said, "When are you going to put this online?" And I said, "Never." Um, well, never is here. It's uh, it's it's not an online train. I mean, it is done online, but it's not an online training. It is a live training using Zoom. So the only thing it's missing is you can't pick up my cameras. Otherwise, it is the exact same two-day class. Uh, Thursdays and Fridays through mid-June right now, and probably longer based on the way things are going. But uh, I, I couldn't be more excited, I'll be totally honest with you. We set up a nice studio, studio lighting, three webcams, hooking up cameras. The guys have told me that, it, it, you know, they had never thought it could have been as good or better, and they thought it might have been even been better because of the the ability to share screens back and forth. But anyway, I digress. Let me let me go on. We'd only have an hour and we're already 10 minutes in. So uh, cameras range anywhere from $400 to $10,000. Um, can a $700 C3 uh, do the same thing a $10,000 E95 can do? Um, well, it better not be able to. Or the guy that paid 10 grand for that E95 is going to be quite upset. So you got to learn the, the limitations and capabilities of different cameras. Does C2 or C3 or C5, do those have good application for home inspectors? Absolutely. You just need to learn their abilities. 
using a good infrared camera means you're doing a more thorough inspection. Uh, it's been proven by the insurance companies. Um, I think trying to think of his name, uh, Bob Pearson with Allen Insurance. Uh, it's proven that home inspectors that use an infrared camera as part of their home inspection are doing a more thorough inspection and their incident of claims against their liability insurance, as long as they're qualified and certified to use it, are less than those that don't use an infrared camera. So Bob said, why wouldn't I include the liability insurance for the infrared? If you know what you're doing, there's no question because you're finding things, the missing things, you know, um, right here, the second one, you know, and insurance companies are buying infrared cameras by the hundreds because they can, they can see uh, things that we can't see with our eyes. So, you know, and the, some of the pushback I've heard, well, you know, an infrared camera is, uh, that goes above and beyond the standards of practice, which absolutely does. Uh, doesn't mean you can't do it, but you should absolutely know what you're doing. You know, what we do as a home inspector is a visual, non-invasive, non-destructive evaluation of the home under the conditions as found during that, that time in, you know, that time of the day, that day, not in the future, not in the past, that day. And I said, that's exactly what infrared is. The only thing that differs, the only thing that is different about doing a visual home inspection, it's a thermal home inspection. It is a thermal, non-invasive non-destructive evaluation of the building components, the electrical system, the radiant heating system, water in the walls, water in the ceiling, water in the floor, pet leaks, plumbing. There is so many things that a home inspector can use an infrared camera for. Um, it's exciting. Anyway. Um, How good are those I, cell phone apps? I'm sorry? How good are those cell phone apps? Well, it's uh, the FLIR. The FLIR one is a uh, plug it into my iPhone, plug it into my Android um, little cube, you know, that plugs into the connector. So it's it's you do have to download the FLIR tools or the FLIR one app, but um, yeah, it's not just an app that that may turn your infrared camera or your cell phone into an infrared camera. They are. A consumer electronics product um, at $400 for the FLIR One Pro. Um, it does have a 12-month warranty. It, meaning, um, if I got, and I had a home inspector, I'll give you a perfect example. Home inspector said, oh, "I've been using the FLIR One for four years." I said, "Really? You got one to last four years?" He said, "No, I'm on my third one." <laughs> so, um, it's it's not that they don't work. It's, um, I mean, I carry one everywhere I go. I've got a FLIR one I take hunting with me. And uh, no, I don't mount it on the gun, but it, you know, for sitting in the blind, you know, in the dark. Anyway, there's a lot of applications, but I would never use it on an inspection. It's, it's kind of hard to charge extra money for something that, you know, they can buy at Best Buy. Um, and the sign, whether it's the $400 FLIR One Pro or the $40,000 T1020, almost a megapixel thermal imager, the science is all the same. Uh, can the FLIR One Pro do everything a two or $3,000 E6 or E8 can do? Absolutely not. Um, is it okay for some things? Yes, it is. So again, it, I got guys bring them to class all the time. And yes, they do have some application. If I've got a good Delta T from inside the house to outside, I can find, and I, I'm, I'll warn you really quick, guys, I don't, I don't hesitate to say, learn from my mistakes, okay? 32 and a half years ago, I told a builder, there's no insulation in that wall cabinet. And he tore the drywall off the wall. And it had insulation in it, but it was installed improperly. Um, it had an airspace between the insulation and the drywall. It didn't touch the top plate, and the air was allowed to travel freely between the insulation and the wallboard. And from the inside, with the wallboard in place, it looked like it was uninsulated. So you've got to learn how to speak intelligently about what the infrared. He didn't make me pay for it, but I have heard horror stories from guys telling me, 
Oh yeah, I had a guy come to that came to the CRT class, call me one day. He says, "Did Fleer come out with a camera that says it's wet?" And I said, uh, "No." He said, "I got a call from a contractor who says uh, he was contracted to rip up the vinyl flooring and replace the subfloor because the home inspector said it's all wet underneath the vinyl flooring. He's got the vinyl flooring up and the subfloor is perfectly dry." Who's paying to put that vinyl flooring back down? And I don't need to answer that question. So you've got to learn the limitations. You've got to learn how to speak intelligently. And once you do, talk to Sean Troxel, talk to your peers, talk to people that are using it on every inspection. I've got guys that have never used one. They get to using it and they come back a month later and they say, I don't know how the heck I did a home inspection without an infrared camera. I can't envision doing another home inspection without it. You just, anyway, I'm, I'm preaching to, I know some of you are I'm preaching to the choir, but if you don't do anything, look at the electrical panel with the infrared camera. It's not if, it's when. Um, just in the last two years, one gentleman has found first a 527 degree hot lug, then it was 622 degree main breaker. And then just three months ago, and I've got it now in my CRT um, class, the dryer connection in the electrical panel. I've, now, granted, you'd have seen the visual burn. The connection was cherry red and it me measured four, 1492 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, I had to look up, look it up. Copper melts at 18 or 1900 degrees. So, and I, I, it was the hottest thing I've seen in over 33 years I've, ever. I've never seen anything that hot and it was cherry red. Anyway, there are so many things, insulation, hot spots, termites, ants, bees nests. Um, it's, a, it's incredible. Again, infrared cameras, learning what they can and cannot do. They do not see through glass. They do not see through water. They do not see through building materials. They are looking at number two, surface or infrared cameras only show surface temperature differentials. I hold up a piece of paper in front of an infrared camera and it might as well have the lens cap on the camera. You don't see through anything a house is made out of. Learning, looking at a house from the inside versus outside, you gotta know which way the heat energy, is it warmer in the house and cooler outside or cooler in the house and warmer outside. That'll tell you what things are supposed to look like and how to interpret it. Um, and knowing, are you dealing with um, slab on grade, crawl space, full basement, block, um, two by four stick built platform. Um, I, there's so many different types of construction and knowing what you're dealing with is gonna know what, you're, what you should be looking at and looking for. And a lot of times the infrared camera will, will tell you, that, hey, that's 100 year old balloon construction. Uh, and I already said that infrared is not about just taking a picture. You've got to understand emissivity. And I know probably a lot of you have never heard the word before, but you've heard it referred to. I guarantee everybody on this has heard of low E windows. Okay, that's what the E stands for, low E windows, emissivity. A low emissivity means a high reflectivity, and then it reflects the heat, and it helps the windows perform better. So you've got to know emissivity. When we look at a surface, how does it emit heat? How does it reflect heat? And again, as I said in number three, learn how to speak intelligently. Infrared cameras can reflect. This is a 480 volt disconnect. A phase, B phase, and C phase, a three phase electrical cabinet. It looks like B phase is hot. This is a video. I'm standing directly in front of a 480 volt panel, and I'm going to click on this video here in a second. All I'm going to do is shift my weight from my left foot to my right foot and back and forth and kind of swaying left and right. Okay. And as I do this, you're going to see my thermal image reflect off of the shiny metals. Now that center phase is cold, now it's hot. And now the right set phase is hot and the center phase is cold. 
it, you've got to be aware of reflections. And what I just showed you in that video is exactly how you do it. Anybody using an infrared camera, you find a thermal anomaly, a thermal difference, and you, the first thing you got to do is determine, is that truly a thermal problem, a thermal anomaly, or is it just a reflection? And you do that by moving, looking at it from another angle. And now I realize you guys can't see me, but please listen. If you're using an infrared camera, and I know you're all using visual cameras, one safety item. There is an inherent danger when using an, a camera, whether it's a visual camera or an infrared camera. You're going to get wrapped up as to what you see on your screen, and you're going to be looking through your camera, again, infrared or visual, and you're going to forget about watching where your feet's going. Feet? No, where your feet are going. And, you know, Paul Grover, the founder of the Introspection Institute, walked off a roof. I came two inches from stepping off a roof 20 feet to the next elevation. We've had elect, uh, guys doing high voltage electrical testing back up into electrical cabinets and get killed. So that one rule of thumb, if I can't say it, I'll, and I beat, the, beat it to death with every group that will give me five minutes in front of them. If you're looking through your camera, don't move your feet. Period. All right. Let's move on. That's a good tip. And it doesn't matter if it's an infrared camera or visual camera. I had a guy in class, and he told me his company policy, the owner told him when he hired on, and they didn't have infrared at the time. All they had was visual cameras. And he said, the, the owner of the company told me if I'm on the roof and I step off the roof when I'm taking a visual picture, I'm fired before I hit the ground because that's against company policies. Same thing. If you're, if you're looking through your camera, you know, watch where you're going. Don't, don't move your feet if you're looking through your camera. Why do we find water inside a house? Let's get through because we're already only a half hour, 35 minutes left. Evaporative cooling as water, you know, I, I had a guy in last week's class that say, you know, I get it if the water's hot or the water's cold, you know, that we might be able to see that. But if it's hotter, it, once it gets to room temperature, isn't it going to become the same temperature as all the components around it? And I said, yeah, for a split second. And then evaporation kicks in. <clears throat> if you're in an indoor environment where you're conditioning the air and you have relative humidity below 75%, you have evaporation. And the evaporative cooling effect, as water evaporates, it cools the surface off and shows up as a thermal anomaly. And normally, it, is show, it, it looks uh, cooler than the surroundings. Now, I like to, and if I, I don't know if I can, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do it now. But normally, I say, all right, pay attention to the picture on the right. And visually, there, you don't see anything to report. I mean, you do have an outlet here in the corner. So maybe you get down on one knee to plug in your outlet tester here, and you when you stand up, you go, my dang knee's wet. So the homeowner or whoever was living there must have had a bunch of stuff piled up in the corner. This wall right here is a common wall between the bedroom and the bathroom. It's the same air temperature in the bedroom as it is in the bathroom, and there's no reason for there to be a thermal difference in this wall. And with the infrared camera, we can see this thermal difference right here. And it happened to be the sink leaking in the wall, hit the plate, came under the wall. And when they had boxes and stuff piled up in the corner, it pushed the carpet and pad down into the wet subfloor. And when they cleaned up, when they staged the house for sale, as you can see on the right side, uh, you walk in and the infrared camera sees it. And it's, I, I can't stress enough, you know, maybe, like I said, maybe if you got down on one knee. I had a guy in class tell me a few years ago, yeah, but it's not our responsibility to find hidden problems or hidden moisture. And I went, okay, I, I agree with you, but let's, let's set this scenario. So you don't use an infrared camera. You don't see this. It looks fine because it's hidden. 
And a month after your client buys a house, they decide to replace the carpet. And when the guy replaces the carpet, he says, uh, ma'am, your subfloor is all wet and rotten. Who's getting one of the first phone calls? And first the realtor and then the home inspector. Why didn't you find this? Anyway, and, and that's my point. Um, it's better to be more thorough and, and you, you will be thoroughly amazed, guys. Um, and the point I always make in classes, it was so obvious. Well, you can see it right here in the thermal image. But you've also done inspections on rental properties. And I've seen the pictures you guys have posted, uh, you know, where the boxes in the garage are so deep, you can see the top of the electrical panel poking out of the top of the boxes. But there's no way you can get to it. You can't inspect it. The same thing here. What if you'd showed up to do the inspection and this whole corner is full of boxes? You're not going to see this thermal anomaly. And it's the same thing. You guys don't move the dressers. You're not moving beds. What if that thermal anomaly had been under the bed? So you've got to see why A. And you know what? Everybody knows what that means. You've got to make sure you have the right language in your contract to see why A, to cover your butt. For and you're already doing this for your visuals, and we help you do this for your thermals the same way. Um, anyway, let's move. We're never going to get to it. And I, I challenged anybody at any time. This is a less than a two-year-old home, and visually, it, there was absolutely no reason any one of you without an infrared camera would have found this in the wall. Now, I see this thermal anomaly with the infrared camera, and I'm standing in the doorway to the laundry room. And I say, I think I know what that book, I think I know what that is. But an infrared camera only finds a thermal problem. What says it's wet? A moisture meter. Not most, if not all, home inspectors are using moisture meters. So I walked over and I don't go into a house without a moisture meter. And I took a reading here and then I compared it to what I got here and it pegged my moisture meter. It was ice damage. Back on water backed up against the ice, came up under the shingles, came down this outside wall. No visual stain, no sagging, no drooping, no no wrinkle in the paint, nothing. So there was no reason on a ranch, and here's the junction of the ceiling, here's the corner of the room. There's no stain. There's no reason for you to walk over there and put your moisture meter on. It's just you don't slide a moisture meter over every square inch of walls and ceilings if there's no stains. It's, you know, you go to the stains, you go around the toilet, you go to the bottom corners of the windows, you know, the suspect or common areas. But that's the benefit of infrared. You use the infrared camera in one hand, the moisture meter in the other. You find the thermal anomaly with the infrared camera and the moisture meter says it's wet. You find a, what appears to be missing insulation in a wall cavity and a bore scope you drill a hole and do a homes on home interview with that wall, and you drill a hole and you stick the bore scope. If you've got to say there's no insulation in the wall cavity, that's the only way you can say there's no insulation in the wall cavity is to do a destructive test. So you've got to learn how to speak intelligently about it. It appears to be uninsulated, but only further destructive testing will confirm that. But if there's any insulation in that cavity, it's not performing as it's designed to perform. So anyway, that's why the, the class is so important. But I digress. Let's keep going. This was an air conditioner. Uh, sucks air in the bottom, blows air conditioned air out the top, as you can see over here. And there's a condensation collection pan filled up, plugged up with lint or whatever, dirt and crud, and it overflowed. And we can see the puddle pattern on the floor. How do I know this is water? A moisture meter, but at pattern recognition. Look at the edge pattern to the water in the carpet. There's no thermal gradient. There's no gradual change in temperature from the puddle to the dry carpet. So, you know, you look at the visual picture on the left and there's no, no indication whatsoever. But, you know, I had a guy tell, call me from Southern Florida one summer and he goes, you told me I should be able to find water with an I-7. Yeah, why? He says, I'm at a condo, and last night during a showing, they left the sliding glass door open, and overnight there was torrential rains off the Atlantic Ocean. This condo's right on the beach, flooded the condo. And he said, 
the carpet's going squish over here and it's not over here, but with the infrared camera, I see nothing. There's no thermal difference. And I said, that makes no difference. I mean, that makes no sense. How can there be no difference? What's the temperature and relative humidity? And he goes, this is Southern Florida in the summertime. It's gotta be 90 degrees in here with 95% relative humidity. And I said, that's why. Close the sliding glass door, turn on the air conditioner, condition the air down below 75%. Evaporation will kick in. The water will begin to evaporate. It will begin to cool off. And it stuck out, these are his words, it stuck out like a sore thumb. It took three hours to condition the air. So you've got to know the conditions needed. And that's the benefit of infrared. No, no so gradual change, a sharp edge to water and horizontal surfaces. Look at the thermal gradient, or even in grayscale, from the cold air coming out at the top and where the warmer air comes in the bottom, there's a huge temperature change from up here to down here, but no edge pattern like water does. This is typical of electrical, energy, uh, a lot of other thermal anomalies, but water gives you that super sharp edge like this one. Here's water in a wall. Uh, what the homeowner didn't know was that the left side also had some. You can see the bucket on the right, but there was no thermal anomaly. I mean, visual, nothing visual, but the infrared camera, you can see when they pulled the blinds back, stuck out like a sore thumb. Look at it on the ceiling. A lot of people missed that picture. That's a water stain. It probably wasn't even this window. It was probably a second floor window. You can, it looks like there's one here. I wasn't there. So learning how to interpret. Why do we find water outdoors? So you have inside, typically we're using evaporative cooling effect. Outside, we're using thermal capacitance. So that causes water to warm up or cool down slower than the dry components. And here's stucco on the outside of a condo. Now it's not a cure-all fix-all for stucco inspection, but when you get water ingress infiltrating into this and you warm it up, and as the everything is cooling off, the water is going to stay warmer, cooler than the dry components, as you can see here. Got to have the right equipment. I would not be using a C2 or C3 on any of this. Maybe an E8 up to the second floor, an E53, maybe third to fourth floor. But if I'm going fifth, sixth, and seventh floor standing on the ground, you got to have the right. You got to have good optics. You got to have a narrow field of view lens with a high res, or a, yeah, high res detector with good thermal sensitivity, probably an E75 or higher, uh, E95. But you're also not getting three or four hundred dollars for this inspection. It could very easily be two, three grand. So there's a lot of, that's the only device that says it's wet, a moisture meter. And people ask me all the time, what's a good one? I said, if you like it and it works good for you, then that's a good one. <laughs> you know, I, I, there's good ones for $700 and there's good ones for $100. So uh, what do you want it to do? Bluetooth, meter link, uh, you know, go out and buy me a beer when you're done. You know, anyway, yeah, there's there, some of them are lots of bells and whistles. All right, energy audits. I'm not, gonna, again, I'm not going to spend a lot of time um, because we're already running out of it. It's after nine o'clock. Um, the main thing required is a delta T. You have to have a temperature difference from inside to out. You need to know the conditions you're dealing with. You pull up to your job, you pull up to the curb or in the driveway, and you become the infrared weatherman. It's 70 degrees outside. Uh, you look up at the house, it's the windows are open, the doors are open. You've got the 70 degrees inside, 70 degrees outside. There's one indication you cannot use your infrared camera, you know before you even get out of your vehicle, don't say anything about the insulation performance or lack of in this wall because you don't have the right conditions. The fact of the matter is you guys are not scheduling home inspections based on weather conditions. You're scheduling when it fits your schedule and the client's schedule. So you need to know when you, before you get out of your vehicle, do I have the right conditions for it? the moisture for the 
electrical, for the energy, for the walk, all of it. You need to know, that's why not only know how to use a camera, what things should look like and shouldn't look like, but what are the conditions needed for each one of those applications? A really good camera, you know, E6, eight or nine degrees from inside out. Some of the other cameras are gonna need 20 degrees. Um, the, C, the FLIR 1, C2, C3, I would recommend 18 to 20 degrees. E6 or higher or better, eight or nine is probably all you need. Um, it does take you time to understand what it's showing you, and you will make mistakes if you don't ask for help. And that's training um, or the Certified Residential Thermography Facebook group, but I digress. So very quickly, this is a balloon construction, 100-year-old home. Um, we can see warmer framing members and cooler cavities. Black is cold and white's hot. If you've never seen a thermal imager, you need to buy a TV because that's you know it's in almost every show. The new Hobbs and Shaw movie, the newest uh, Fast and Furious, Fur whatever they those are called. You know those guys are holding an E8 and an E53, and I was this is so cool. And then they stick it up to the door, and the thermal imager picture shows what's on the other side of the door. I said, son of a gun. Now, how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people are going to see this? And now they perceive that infrared cameras see through the walls. I, it just, I, you know, I don't get it. Artistic liberty, I guess, is what they call it. This cavity right here is exactly what it should look like. I'm outside and it's cold outside. Insulation should look cooler and the framing members should look warmer. It's warmer in the house, colder outside. The heat inside is coming out. It's coming up faster through this cavity where there's no insulation. So it looks warmer. It's coming out faster through the two by the framing members than it is through the insulation itself. Here's some more, same one. Look at the soffits look like they're on fire. Balloon construction, here's the first floor window. Here's the second floor window, no deck. You can see those are, 20 foot tall, 18 foot tall two by fours. There's no platform in the middle. The floor joists are hanging right about in here somewhere. And that's why I'm saying you can use an infrared camera and help you to determine what kind. But from again, outside cool, I'm on the cool side, insulation should look cool. I'm on the warm side, insulation should look warm. Figure out what side of the wall you're looking at. You're on the warm side, insulation looks warm. You're on the and avoid or a problem was cold. So just you gotta you gotta learn what you're looking at and looking for. No, that's not a scope on a rifle. Um, uh, they do make them, but no, that um, home inspector in Florida sent me this picture. Air conditioning season in southern Florida and air conditioning down say 75 degrees and this area is insulated, the slope ceiling, the wall, this is an interior wall with a bedroom behind it. This is an attic. And Robert sent me this picture and he said, hey, do you think there's no access to this attic? Do you think there's any insulation in that, in that wall? And I said, no, no, none. So well, you, you told me in class not to ever say that. And I said, well, yeah, but some of them don't look good and some don't. They all look bad. They all, that, that entire wall appears to be uninsulated. So you've got to use the, that terminology. You've got to use those, and I hate to say it this way, but you know what I mean. You've got to be non-committal and don't say there's no insulation in that wall. Because if they, just like I did 32 and a half years ago, they open up that wall and there's insulation in that wall. They're going to, you know, that's, that's my point. And it, anyway. This is the stuff you're looking for, big areas, whether it's this one, big hot areas, if it's hot outside, big cold areas, if it's cold outside. They, you know, they do this all the time. They replace a ceiling light with a ceiling fan and uh, they move the insulation to reinforce the box and they don't put the insulation back. This is scary. This is a brand new home in Texas uh, two summers ago. And they had forgotten, and they put the fiber, the fiberglass bats under the plywood in the attic, 
and then they mounted their HVAC equipment on top of the plywood, but they were the insulation contractor was supposed to come back and blow cellulose or fiberglass and the rest of it. And the entire home, other than this platform, was a, not not appeared. It was uninsulated. You know, they obviously went in the attic and confirmed it. I can look at this window, and I didn't take the picture. I can look at this thermal image from 20 years ago, and I can tell you, I'm in a warm house and it's cold outside. And the reason I know that, look at the cold glass. I can tell a lot about a thermal image by looking at the picture, as I'll teach you how to do. Because that glass is ice cold like that, black is cold, I know the sun's not shining on this wall from the outside. And because the glass is cold, I know I'm in a warm house and it's cold outside. So the heat in my house or the heat in this house is going outside. If the insulation is installed properly, it's going to hold the heat in like I see right here. Warm insulation. I'm on the warm side. The insulation looks warm. This is what it should look like if it's insulated properly. This is what it would look like if it were uninsulated. I didn't say it was uninsulated. You heard. It was uninsulated. I said this is what it would look like if it was uninsulated. This is my point, and this is why you got to learn how to speak intelligently. You got to learn how to use the right terminology when interpreting and reporting, so that you're, you know, in two minutes of education at the beginning of your inspection with your client will save a ton of questions. Air infiltration, black cold air coming around the window. Missing insulation. All right, I'm going to go back on my safety soapbox here for 30 seconds. And I am not a ladder expert, but I've heard of the three point ladder rule, which is keep three of your four appendages in contact with the ladder at all times, um, not three on everything else and one on the ladder. Um, so, and this is low income weatherization. Uh, I would not be putting any weight on that rotting plywood awning over that entry door. But so this weatherization agency used the infrared camera to evaluate this home to see what it needed. And it was determined it needed insulation. They brought in the contractor who drilled and probed and blew insulation. They took the infrared camera back out afterwards. The image on the right is what it looked like after the contractor had been there and left. This is the contractor coming back on his own nickel to fix it. So we're ending up with a lot better insulation. It's quality control. There's so much you can do with an infrared camera. Air infiltration on the right, duct leakage on the left, more air infiltration around a door. Um, Hot foundations, uninsulated foundations, basement windows, uh, badly insulated bond between the floors, uh, hot spots in the wall. This is from the, you can see the furnace vent runs inside the house, inside cavity, inside the house, just inside this wall. So it's going to be hot in that one foot square box all the way from the basement through the roof deck. And that's this warm spot and this hot spot. Uh, they had the wall the vent in the bathroom on the second floor closed. And it's like blown in the end of a bottle. That hot air wanted to come into the room, but instead it was trapped in the wall and it leaked out and created this hot spot. Uh, there's all kinds of stuff you're going to see. Um, that is the only device that says there's no insulation in the wall. Appliances, water heater, copper pipe, you got to learn how to do it right. Water temperatures, and I'll be the first one to tell you guys, don't, when they tell you how, so many minutes and 120 degree water will cause this degree of burn, they're not kidding. I have a nephew who's in his 50s that has scar tissue from the waist down because as a toddler, he climbed up in the half bath, turned the hot water on while my aunt was vacuuming and she couldn't hear him screaming. So it definitely uh, is not a good scenario. Yes. What, uh, what camera were you using in that picture there? Well, that picture is probably equivalent today of the E75, a focusable 320 by 240 lens. 
Yeah, nice Thank picture. You. Very nice picture. Yep. Um, even gas fired appliances. One, it doesn't take but three seconds, five seconds. You turn all four electric range tops on, and in you know within seconds you can tell if all four of them are coming up to town or are heating up. Refrigerator. I got to tell me, I tried using a temperature gun to measure the inside temperature of a of a refrigerator, and I was getting like 54 degrees. There is something in the refrigerator that's 54 degrees. You can see it right here. And when I took this thermal image of this refrigerator, the entire thermal image is nothing but the inside of the refrigerator. And the scale on the right automatically tells you the approximate highest temperature and the approximate lowest temperature. Now I've got crosshairs dropped and those temperatures displayed right there. And this is my hotel refrigerator, my home away from home. Um, but well, not this time of year. But anyway, um, it, would an E6 pick that up, Bill? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is very, very, uh, I would say very comparable to an E6. Yes. Very good. Radiant heating system. That's what it should look like. And in the north, when people have more money than they know what to do with, uh, snow melt systems for their driveways. They don't have to shovel the snow. And they're all over the place. And it's, if you live in a cold climate, what else can I do with my infrared camera to earn some extra money? Uh, two weeks ago, I did a, a car wash in Ypsilanti, Michigan, um, because he had a leak in the radiant heating system in one of the bays. And they have this, you know, because here in the cold climate, if the concrete falls below 32 degrees and somebody goes in there and washes their vehicle, uh, in Michigan, we call those skating rinks, okay? So they've got to keep the concrete slab temperature, like say 40 degrees, you know, above freezing so that the water used to wash a vehicle doesn't freeze. So there's so many applications, but what does a leak look like? How do I do the test? What are the conditions needed? Electrical, and I'm telling you, it's not if, it's when. This is an occupied home with nothing, no thermal anomaly, but don't put your thermal blinders on. Here's the one I told you about. This is from Bradley Scott in the Orlando, Florida area. 527 degrees at the main lug in this electrical panel. And how do I know it's a connection and not a, a load issue? Because it's hotter at the connection. And as I travel the wire away, the thermal gradient that I was talking about with the water, the gradual change in temperature over a distance is we often analyze that thermal gradient to uh, identify conductive issues. And this is a conduction problem. This is a high resistive connection causing this kind of temperature. Um, how to prioritize it, how to report it. And you can see this was from almost two years ago. That's the one I showed you in the opening um, slide. A uh, hot pool pump, 213 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, insect, vermin, bees nest in a roof line. Um, bees nest. Um, hey, Bill. Is, yes. Um, a couple slides back, the real clear images. What are those? What camera is that? That's, yeah. Um, what is, let's see, that's BJ. I think he's got the E. 85, 75, 85, or 95. It's a, it, it's higher end. It's seven, you know, seven to 10 grand. Yeah. yeah it's, they're not cheap, but Let's, you know what? What you can do with them is incredible. And, you know, if, and I tell guys the same thing, you know, uh, I'm going to buy a $2,000 camera. I'm going to buy a 3000 What are you going to do with it? You tell me what you're going to do with it, and I'll tell you what camera will fit. If you're going to be doing any long distance imaging, don't buy an E6. Don't buy an E8. If you're going to be doing third floor stucco from the outside, that has the wrong optics. It's a great camera inside the house. But if you want a camera that works really well inside and out, you need a camera with interchangeable lenses. Yeah, you got more into it, but you get more. And if you haven't paid for your camera in three months, you're doing something wrong. What I mean by what do you that, think the what, what do you think the percentage of inspectors who have those high dollar cameras? 
a lot 7, more clear plus. than I would have ever imagined. Um, probably of the of all the inspectors that I work with that have cameras, I would say probably 10 to 15 percent of them have at least the E53 of five grand, five to ten grand. Yeah, no, it's not three quarters of them, but I would bet better than 60% of them have the E6 or the E8. It has been the absolute workhorse for home inspectors. Um, guys are buying the C2, they're buying the C3. They like it, oh, it's light, it fits in my pocket. They get into the infrared and then they, I, I, and I'm, you know, I can, I can stand here or sit here actually and, and tell you what camera to buy, but talk to your peers. And what I what I mean by that is I can tell you stories, you know, and it's it's not just my recommendation, it's historical data. Guys that buy the C2, the C3, the E4, a lower resolution camera, it's a good start. It's a good entry level. But when they get into it, they usually will come back and say, I wish I'd have bought a camera with better resolution or now I'm ready to get a camera with better resolution. So you tell me, it's gonna come down to budget. I mean, my gosh, you've got cameras at 500, 700, 1,000, 1,400, 2,000, 3,000, 5,000. You got something for every budget, but you've gotta make sure you buy the right camera. And uh, yes, we sell them, but I'll be, and I'm probably not the best salesman because I'm not gonna oversell you. So I'm the best salesman from your perspective because I'm going to be honest with you and I'm going to tell you, you tell me what you're going to do with it and I'll tell you what camera you really need to do it with. All right, Bill, you got, do, you got about 10 minutes, Bill. All right, let's move. Insect and vermin, as I said, bees nest. This one was with the fascia board in place and the guy that did the inspection said that little spot was where the bees were coming and going. This was the thermal image with the board in place. He said, then I, there's the same little dark spot. Now it's a hot spot. Then he took the fascia board off and there's the hive inside the visual and the thermal. So, and he has sent me a ton. His name is Dale Richter and he's, yeah. Bo Passon, a Fabby and Ashy member in the Orlando area. This is a bee's nest behind that faux brick. And there's where the cable goes into the house. And the bees, he said he was doing his visual and he got here and the bees are flying in and out. There's the siding that I showed you the thermal image in the opening slide. He, he, home inspector in the Detroit area said it took him three visits to figure out what was what could possibly be causing the vinyl siding to be melting like this. And it was the next door neighbor's second floor window reflecting the solar, the sun's energy off of that window onto the north side of this house. And he caught it, as you can see, 198 degrees in the shade. Oh, um, and there's the culprit, the next door neighbor's second floor window. Um, my pet is house trained, uh, not, okay? So there, there's, and I'm gonna be right on time because this is my last slide. Um, you don't know what you're going to see. The infrared camera, and, the, and I keep, I, I stress it. The only thing an infrared camera does, it shows you what you cannot see with your eyes. It doesn't say that's wet. It doesn't say that's uninsulated. It doesn't say that's overloaded. It doesn't say that's a raccoon. In 33 years of doing infrared, I've never heard an infrared camera say anything. It's the guy standing behind the camera that opens up his trap misinterprets what he's looking at. I just recently had an insurance guy tell a home inspector, oh, you're using an infrared camera. Yeah, yeah. Well, if it's blue, it's wet. You know that, right? That's wrong. I'm sorry, guys. It's Now, if it's colder you know, than you're expecting to see or warmer than you're expecting to see, it's called a thermal anomaly. And it shows you where, put your camera down and go look closer, go investigate it. You'll know you've caught the infrared bug when you start using or taking your infrared camera on vacation with you. So this is at uh, the Peabody in Memphis, Tennessee, another video, and I went to see the walk of the ducks. <laughs> so uh, as they, you know, every morning and every afternoon, they bring, they wade the or 
proceed. They bring the ducks down off the roof and bring them in the fountain in the lobby, and then at five o'clock they put them back on the roof. Um, what camera is that, Bill? Oh, uh, that was my old four or twenty, about yeah, eight thousand dollar camera. So that's me. Um, I am Bill Fabian Monroe Infrared Technology. Uh, if you can take a screenshot or whatever, that's my cell phone. Um, I could give you the 800 number, which I thought was on there, but it's got my office direct line. But uh, it's 800 221 um, Monday through Wednesday, I'm available uh, on, by phone. Thursday and Friday for the foreseeable future, I'll be doing the CRT class. Uh, from my studio, my studio it used to be a storeroom. It actually used to be my office, but um, I really appreciate uh, you guys giving me the time. I enjoy the infrared technology immensely. And uh, if I can answer any questions, please do not hesitate to call on me. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at a future conference or uh, uh, the CRT class. By the way, the CRT class is $4.95 for the two-day class, and I guarantee you, as most guys tell me, it, it's worth more than that. You should be charged it's more a, than that. It's, it's a great program. it's a great presentation and a great class. I recommend it to everybody. We did have a good question, a couple questions come in here. Um, okay. In, a, in addition to visually inspecting a house, there are a lot of items that you could scan with infrared. How much time do you think it will add to a thorough infrared to add to do a thorough infrared scan? And what are the priority items that you'd scan? All right. So you um, to answer the first question, and I've asked this of guys that do infrared on every house. When you first get started, yeah, it's going to take you a little bit longer because you're trying to figure out what things should and shouldn't look like. And I tell you guys all the time, if you don't leave class and go to your house, your mother's house, your brother's house, you, if you do it. And on every job, you're going to get really good, really fast. And then most guys are telling me it adds about 20 minutes to a 2,000 square foot home. Uh, most guys are getting minimum 50 bucks more. Not that they're charging, you know, hey, do you want me to do the infrared? It's 50 bucks more. They will start, usually they're charging 50 bucks more than their competition because they offer it and they're qualified and certified to do it. And, you know, oh, I can't, you know, I'm having a hard time getting, you know, they went up five bucks this month, 10 bucks the next month. The next thing you know, five months down the road, six months down the road, they're getting $50 more. And he said, that guys don't even bat, they don't bat enough. It's beautiful. Uh, the priority items, I, you're going into every room in the house anyways. You're looking at the walls and let's, I'll make an assumption here. It's an unoccupied home for sale. You're doing the inspection. So you go into a bedroom. How much furniture is in the room is going to is going to you know change how long it takes as well. If I walk into a bedroom or a living room and there is no no furniture, pictures on the wall, anything to deal with, it's not going to add one minute to my time in that room. Because it you're looking at the wall and at the same time you're looking at that wall, you're looking at that wall for a thermal anomaly, which can be caused by energy issues, water issues, pest issues, electrical issues. You're, it's not like you got to go around multiple times for each um, application. You know, you just got to follow the right procedure. And it may be 20 minutes, but I don't know, 50 bucks, I've had guys say, that doesn't sound like very much. No, but if you're getting really busy and you're doing 10 a week, that's 500 a week. So yep. $500 a week times 50 weeks is $25,000 a year. For a twenty-five hundred dollar right. camera, yeah. Other questions? Yeah. How good is uh, looking under the sheathing in an attic? Is it very weather and seasonal dependent? Um, if and that's why you got to understand, and that's when I said you got to be the infrared weatherman. Um, you've got to understand the conditions. So you go when you pull up in front of that house. Why well, I, I said before. You know, what's the outside temperature? What's the inside? The other question you have to ask, when's the last time it rained? If it's rained within the last week, a good hard rain, and that roof, those shingles are leaking. There's nothing to look at a shingle from the outside. There's no reason to, is what I'm saying. 
but take the infrared camera into the attic, look up at the roof deck, and I can tell you firsthand because it happened in my own house. A valley wore out the shingle at the bottom where it dumped out, and it created a hole. Water got in there, got under the tar paper, into the OSB, and I was able to see in from the attic side with the infrared camera the water dripping visually i could see the water dripping between two sheets of osb thermally with the infrared camera i could see this three inch wide by three foot long cooler swath where the water was running where it was getting the wood wet if the if there's a if especially if the sun is shining on that roof all day long the wet roof deck and the dry roof deck would be different temperatures um, and there's other things to find in the attic. The, the you know, pests, you know, infestations of you know, raccoons, uh, heat loss. There's, there's a ton of stuff. And I recommend you take it in every attic. Absolutely. OK. Um, what are the advantages to the other certifications you offer, like level one and two and three? If you're going, I designed the CRT class. And the definition, really, the CRT class is designed for a home inspector who wants to utilize the infrared camera as part of their home inspection. In my opinion, the CRT is all a home inspector needs to use the infrared camera as part of that process. If you're going to go on, and some guys just want to know more, they want to, you know, go deeper into the science and how do I measure emissivity and how do I measure all of the, you know, do all of that stuff then by all means go to level one. If you're gonna start marketing infrared to industrial commercial clients for electrical, mechanical, flat roof moisture detection, steep trap analysis, all those things that you can do, go to level one, no question about it. There's no government agency that says, no regulations that says, it's not a license. There's nobody out there that's saying, if you buy an infrared camera, you must get some level of training. A lot of it is the clients, we get contracts in our service division all the time where the clients say, the thermographer you send to do this will be a level one or it will be a level two. Then they know the level of expertise of the guy coming and doing the inspection. Um, but it all depends, it, you know, I think the CRT is good. Uh, Sean, you could probably comment on that. I don't know if you've gone on and done level one. I know you've been back to the CRT for at least twice, but um, CRT you know, is fantastic. But we have we have a guy who's a level three now, and he's been inspecting for 18 years. He's concerned that promoting the use of IR with every inspection and not as a troubleshooting tool may add to my liability because an IR IR scan is a quick view and not an in-depth evaluation what do you think about that i would welcome that gentleman uh female it doesn't matter to come and review the crt class i've had guys stand up at the beginning of the class and say, i am a level three and i teach level one and level two for the infrared training center clears training on you get so much level one science in a two-day class um I've had, I've trained over 2,000 home inspectors over the last, well, it'll be seven years in June next month. Um, and I've had level one, level two guys come through this class who said the science was spot on, but I learned more about how to use an infrared camera as part of a home inspection from your class than I did the level one class. Um, granted, there, I'm not going to go into how to measure emissivity, how to measure T-reflect, how to get as accurate a temperature reading as possible, because quite frankly, that's not something we need to do. We, or you need to do. I, and even in our service division, there's many times of predictive maintenance applications. Home, so many of the applications during a home inspection, moisture, energy, finding the raccoon, all our qualitative and nature. What that means is you don't need to measure the temperature to find the water. You just need to find the thermal anomaly and understanding emissivity and understanding reflectivity. Please, by all means, I get it. I understand, you know, uh, 
there's another organization out there that says you shouldn't measure temperature of anything unless you're at least a level two. That's that's not true. That is not true in, in any respect. You need to come to the you need to review the class. And if you don't think it was worth the money, I'll give you the money back. But I guarantee you it will be one of the best two day classes you've ever been to. Okay, and one last real quick, and then we got to wrap up. Um, what level camera can you take the optical picture at the same time as you take the infrared picture? Everything. Um, yeah. Every camera that FLIR makes, from the FLIR 1, C2, C3, um, takes when you push the, well, the C2 and up, when you push the button or squeeze the trigger, it automatically takes both pictures. It automatically takes the thermal image and the corresponding visual picture simultaneously. Um, and it saves them as one picture and you can use FLIR tools to separate them or if you know how to use the camera, there's a menu in there that says save photo as separate JPEG. So in addition to saving the infrared and visual together, it will save the visual as a separate file so you get sequentially numbered infrared visual infrared visual infrared visual infrared and it's you know the same field of view meaning the same angular field of view the same time and the same picture okay well bill that was um very entertaining interesting and helpful we appreciate your time